Today, we're going to learn how to type a memo. Memo is short for memorandum. Memorandums are used when you are corresponding with someone within the same organization. For instance, if I was going to write to another teacher or to an administrator, I would write a memo. If I was going to be in a club and I wanted to write the members of the club, I would type a memo. So this form of correspondence is very popular in business. Let's get started. Launch Word. I'm going to be using the textbook and in the textbook page 56 provides all of this information. All right, page 56. So when we want to get started in Word 2010 you will notice that the font being used is Calabri. I like to use a serif font so I'm going to change this to either Times New Roman or Cambria. This is the new preferred font for Word 2010. In addition, I like the size of the font to be 12 points. So let's go ahead and change it to 12 points. Now, look over on your home ribbon. Notice you have styles. By default, Word will set up your line spacing that's found here in the paragraph group at 1.15. We don't want that. So I'm going to change that line spacing and just say no spacing. This is just a shortcut that I find works very well. Now, let's put a header in only because I have a whole class printing and you want to know which one is yours. So let's go to the insert ribbon and we're going to go to header and I'm going to take my blank three and go ahead and fill out the information. Remember, you want to put your name, then you want to type your block, and then you want to type your date. Okay. I'm closing my header. Again, this is used only for this class because many of you will be printing, and this way you know for sure which one is yours. So, this is just for classwork. If you're going to type a memo to members of your club, you would not put in a header. All right, we're ready to begin. Memos have a two inch top margin. I'm at single spacing. Notice that I have a grade one inch margin at the top and over here on the left and over here on the right. If I scroll all the way down, you'll notice another one inch margin on my ruler. If your rulers are not displayed, remember that you can click this icon to view your rulers. Okay. Margins are set on the Page Layout tab. So we have Page Layout, Margins, and it's your normal margins that give us one inch all around. So that's the other way you can check your margins. Because I have a one inch margin here, I need a two inch margin. I have to add an inch. To add an inch, I'm just going to hit the Enter key until my cursor gets down to that one inch mark. So notice where my cursor is blinking. There is my one inch mark because we know one plus one equals two. I am now ready to begin typing. I start at the left margin and I write the words two with a colon. All right, oops, it didn't take my font, so let me change that. Again, Cambria, 12 point. There we go. All right. So two and a colon. A colon is the shift of the semicolon. Hit the tab key. The tab key is found above the cap lock key twice. One, two. And we're going to type who we are writing the memo to. In this case, it's foreign language department students. Now, to is a heading. The next heading is from, but we double space between the to and the from. To double space, I hit the enter key once, twice. Notice I'm leaving one blank line. Type the word from, again in all capital letters. Hit the tab key. Hit it again. You want to make sure that you line up your cursor with the same location as that F in foreign. And it's coming from Mary Seville 
Travel Abroad Coordinator. Again, we're going to add our next heading line, double space. Hit the Enter key once, twice, and now we type the date, again in all capital letters. Tab, so the text lines up, and we're going to type the date. In the book, on page 56, you will notice that you see a dash next to 20. The reason for that is you simply need to type in the end of the year. So I type in the 14. All right, we're not done with our headings. We have one more. Double space, that's hitting the Enter key twice. Notice that if I bring my I-beam, a double space leaves one blank line, and my I-beam can show me that. Your fourth line of your heading is SUBJECT. Again, typed in all caps. Hit a tab only once this time, and it lines up, and we're going to type our subject line. Click on that cap locks, and it's called Open House. The subject line is always typed in all capital letters. So all memos start like this. You have a to, a from, a date, and a subject. To, from, date, subject are all in capital letters. We tab in order to type in the information, Foreign Language Department, Mary Seville, the date and the subject line. We're now ready to type our memo. Again, we double space. We begin typing our memo, and when we type, make sure that you use one space after the question mark or the period at the end of the sentence. They are single spaced and we use word wrap. Are you ready? Go ahead and type. One space, that's the new way of typing. In the book, it has two spaces, but the book is on the old side. I have finished typing the first paragraph. So paragraphs are single spaced and it looks like this. When you're done with the first paragraph, we double space in between paragraphs. Hit the Enter key twice. Notice that I do not tab at the beginning of a paragraph. We do not do that in a memo. All right, continue to type the rest of the letter. I'll meet you back here. Notice that I have finished typing the body of the letter. Be sure that you proofread your document and make any corrections. If you see a red underline, you can right-click and notice that your suggestions will appear. The spell check option is automatically turned on. If you want to double check your document, you can go to the review ribbon and there's your spelling and check grammar. But by default, it should be there. All right. If you look at the body of the text in the book on page 56, you'll notice that they bolded the names of the cities in Italy. So in order to quickly bold, we're going to go back to our home ribbon. Select a word. To do that, you can simply double click on the word. So when I double click, the word is highlighted. In the font group on the home ribbon, there's my bold key. But there's another way of doing this too. You could highlight the word and just use the keyboard shortcut, Control B. But there's also another way that makes a shortcut a little bit easier. Use the control, your mouse, and double click on Venice. Hold the Control key down and double click on Naples. Notice how you've now selected two objects at the same time. You can hit bold, voila, you've now saved yourself some time. Let's do that again with the November 15 and the 330. Again, this you have to click and drag because if I double click, I only click one word. Triple click highlights the whole paragraph, so that's not something we want to do at this time. So I'm going to highlight November 15. Again, Hold the control key on your keyboard down and highlight 
your time. Notice that both are highlighted, but not the word at. When you go over, notice you also get this pop-up window. How sweet is that? You can, if you want, just hit the underline in that window. So now you've learned shortcuts to add proper or interesting formats that are available to you, the bold and the underline. All right, we're not done really. We have one more thing to add to this memo. Double space below your last paragraph. In the book, you're going to see those two X's. Those represent your initials. So I'm just going to type my initials in lowercase letters. LK indicates that you were the one who typed the letter, and in this case, you typed the letter from for Mary Seville, the person who is sending the letter. If you wrote your own memo, reference initials are not required. But because it is from Mary, you need to add your reference initials. That's it. You now know how to format a memo.